Welcome to the channel. I'm Bufferfish and this is a Silent Gear mod tutorial. I chose this particular mod because it was recently added in ADM 9 and after having a little bit of a look around in the ATM community discord, I thought that it might be beneficial for the community to make a video about how to get from zero to hero using the Silent Gear mod and also make a tutorial about this particular mod. The items I'm using right now are items I made with Silent Gear mod using the best materials I could find and these give, as you may see, ridiculous amounts of damage for the weapon, damage for the bow, durability, and other properties like traits, which act like enchants, but also keep in mind that unlike Tinker's Construct items, these can be enchanted on top of their existing enchants. When you get started in your world, you should look for gravel and for wood. The gravel you will need for the flint and you will then use flint to make yourself a bunch of template boards. You will also need crafting table. A few sticks. And with the sticks, you can make templates. Just like that, we can make a shears template. These templates can then be used to make items, tools out of. In this situation, I made a flint pair of shears. You can also use the templates to make other items like, for example, a saw blade. This flint saw will then be usable to cut down entire trees in one single swoop. The shears can be used to cut down leaves and also to shear sheep. If we find any sheep around, we could use them to shear them up. This is extremely useful in the first day of your Minecraft playthrough because it allows you to get a bed really early without killing the sheep you have around and therefore be unable to breed more of them. The materials you can actually use to make tools out of are usually marked with S-gear material and you can hold left control to see the details of those materials like durability, armor and other important stats as well as seeing what exactly can you make out of that material. Compared to other particularly well-known mods, like for example, Tinker's Construct, the items in Silent Year can be made much more easy and you have a lot of options. Sicko, shears, fishing rod, bow and crossbow, 
slingshot, which is usable to throw pebbles, spear, which is a melee weapon with a long reach, the katana, which is a slightly faster sword, machete, which is a sword that also doubles as, a, as an axe, the familiar trident, which can be made in other materials than prismarine, the knife, which some of the mods in your pack might actually use for various reasons, the dagger, which is a very, very fast sword, your usual pickaxe, shovel, axe, and so on. An all-in-one tool, if such exists in your particular pack. This one is a Paxel. A hammer, which is a 3x3 mining tool, pickaxe. The excavator, which is the 3x3 shovel. The mattock, which is a tool that doubles both as a shovel and as a hoe. Prospector hammer, which is a tool where, that when right-clicked, it will tell you where exactly you can find ores around it. It has a certain radius between depending on the tier of material which is being used for it. The sickle for large areas of leaves removal and uh, grass removal. The shears, which you have already seen, bow and crossbow, shield, armor, elytra, which can be used to make other material elytras out of. And obviously you have, if, if there is uh, curios installed, you have the ability to make rings and bracelets. All of these items are meant to get you as overpowered as possible while keeping the game a little bit balanced, as much as balance can be achieved when you have such overpowered items. Another option for you to get started is to make vanilla tools and put them in your crafting inventory and you will get silent gear tools out of them. In this particular case, I made a wooden pickaxe which can then be upgraded using cobblestone. Upgrading the material of your particular tool will give you back the old upgraded part. Say, for example, in this case, I upgraded the head and I get the wooden pickaxe head. Another route of upgrading is making a tip out of a certain material, which can be made by making a paper, a stone, and two template boards, and this can be then used to upgrade your existing tool. So in this case, I'm upgrading it using iron to upgrade the harvest level from iron to diamond. This upgrades the item, but keeps the tier of the item the same. It also gives you a bunch of durability and other stats. Tip upgrades can be used on any of the items, including weapons. You can look up all the items you can make by typing at silent in your GEI and having a look at 
all the recipes you can make. Keep in mind that once again, templates are one time use and some of the templates are expensive enough that you may want to make yourself a blueprint for them. Blueprints are multiple use and therefore are a lot more worth it when it comes to making, for example, things like rings and bracelets, which use high tier of materials or coating, which uses a diamond and an emerald. As you may notice, there are a lot of blueprints. And these blueprints may add up really quickly and clutter your inventory or whatever storage you may put them into. But for this, you have the blueprint book, which can be made easily by using a gold ingot, a piece of wool, a book, and a few template boards. In the blueprint book, you can put blueprints, but you cannot put templates. You can fill the book with any blueprints you want, and there is enough room for all of the blueprints to go in there. Blueprints can then be selected and then crafted. using the book as it were a, an actual blueprint. You no longer need to take the item out and you can use Z and C by default to cycle around through the various blueprints that are inside the book. A few of the items that I recommend people making blueprints for are the tool rod, the tip upgrade, the coating blueprint, the grip, the lining, the cord if you like using a bow, the fletching also if you like using the bow, a machete. Now this is my personal preference. I really like the machete. Some people prefer spear. It's particularly useful when you want to keep the creepers at bay. And a ranged weapon. In the early stages of the game, the slingshot can be beneficial. Since you need it anyway for other reasons, namely prospecting, you might also you want to use a prospecting pick. And then the prospecting pick can be combined with cobblestone to get pebble. This is a particularly useful range weapon. Pretty good damage. The prospector can be used to get a grasp of what exactly ores can be found around you and also mine with it. It says here it finds copper ore around it. There we go. Lo and behold, we do have copper ore. The natural progression for silent gear 
is oak, well, any wood type, to flint, to cobblestone, then going into iron, getting one single diamond, making a tip out of that diamond, and getting a bunch of obsidian. Obsidian can also be used as a material. As you may see, obsidian has very, very good stats, including harvest level 3 obsidian, and can also be used very nicely for armor. It has a lot of durability when used for armor, and a whole lot of armor and armor toughness. Once you have been able to go to the nether, you will find crimson iron, which looks like this. And this ore can then be used to make crimson iron ingots. Crimson iron ingots are a tier 3 material, which has a lot of better stats, but lower durability than your existing, by now, pickaxe and armor. Although it has some benefits, it's not as good as you'd like it to be. And therefore, this is probably the best use to, to it, to making <laughs> crimson steel. The crimson steel can then be used to make a metal alloyer, and the metal alloyer is then going to be able to craft you more alloys. The alloys that the mod can make range from alloying its own materials, like, for example, the crimson steel, blaze gold, high carbon steel, tyrian steel, but also combine the materials together with the minor mention that only metals can be combined in the metal alloyer. The refabricator can be used to make cloth, slime, and fibers. The recrystallizer, which is not possible to be made until you get to the, to the end, can be used to get combinations of gems. As you may have noticed already, the materials can add up really quickly and some of the materials are expensive. As you may have noticed, the items you create do get a little bit expensive over time and you may want to recoup some of those materials, especially when you upgrade them. So for this reason, you can make yourself a salvager. Salvager is really easy to make using just a few blaze rods, an up advanced upgrade base, so a little bit of a bit of diamond, a bunch of nether quartz and some iron ingots. The most expensive part of this whole recipe is the diamond shard. 
used in here. The alloy, the salvager, can then be used to salvage items. into their constituent parts. In this situation, we got wooden fragments, all the cobblestone, and an iron ingot. We can also salvage parts In this situation, we got a few steel fragments. Combining eight of them in a crafting grid will give us back one ingot. We can also recoup ready-made items no matter how complicated they are. As I showed you earlier, some of the materials can be combined in the metal alloyer to create even better materials which get all the traits from their parts. In this situation, I want to get void word, which is valid only if get 50%. So if I wanted to get void word, I'm not going to get it if I Put two crimson steel but I will if I put one I do get it if I put two as long as I put two of these as well these traits act as ocean effects or enchant effects and have a condition that has to be met when creating the item or when being used. In our situation, for example, you only get flame ward if you have a full set of items with this particular trait. Some of the restrictions are exclusive with each other. For example, hard 3 can only be gotten if your gear type is tool. Meanwhile, void word and flame word comes into action if you make an armor out of this material. Some do not have a condition at all. Say, for example, in this situation, Sturdy 3 did have a material ratio condition, but once it's alloyed, since that was the whole idea, you already finished alloying, and therefore you already met the condition. So you get Sturdy 3 regardless of how many items you use in this particular setup. So gear takes frequently less damage is being applied all the time. Some of the materials can be used for a tip upgrade to get, as I said earlier, a harvest level boost and a bunch of other stats, as well as more traits. In this situation, Imperial and Gold Digger are very useful traits, but you also get Magmatic, which you may not want if 
you smell the item, it might be less beneficial because of the gold digger will probably not get into action. Also, Imperial gives you more gem drops only if the item is not smelted. So probably this is not the ideal material for you to make a pickaxe out of. Middle to end game, you can make yourself a material grader. These are machines that can be used to grade materials and turn them from extremely good to just ridiculous. Say, for example, I made this Tyrion steel ingot. Right, so let's actually just make a Tyrion steel alloy ingot. Which has 3,000 396 durability, 71x armor durability, a repair bonus of 50%, enchantment value of 19, charging value of 1, and so on and so forth. These are very, very useful stats, which do get increased if you grade them. As you may see, it doesn't matter in terms of stats, but these materials do not stack. Even if they have the same exact stats normally, they are made out of a different setup for the alloy. Even if it's 50%, it's the, this one has four items, this one has two items in its composition. Grading the material requires a glittery dust or any kind of grader catalyst. Glowing dust is a tier one catalyst. Blazing Dust is a Tier 2 Catalyst and Glittery Dust is a Tier 3 Catalyst. Keep in mind that the Blazing Dust might actually be enough for most of the uses, so you do not have to wait until you get Glittery Dust. You could just get started with Blaze Gold and Glowstone and grade your materials. You will probably not get a grade max, but you will eventually get a very high grade tier of material in this situation. For example, we straight up got an S tier. You can always, if you are not happy with the grade that you got, put the material in the material grader again and it will keep on using blazing dust or whatever grading material you have and keep on grading until it gets better results. Some materials like for example the feather do not get any kind of benefits from being graded. The feather in this situation has projectile speed 0.9x and projectile accuracy 110%, but this is the case for all feathers regardless of their grade and of their charging status. We can, however, grade items like, for example, flint.
as you may see the difference between a standard flint which has 124 durability and the double s flint is large enough that it's worth doing so a tech 2 and well, this one has a tech 2.3 if you made a, an armor set out of this it would get 4.6 armor meanwhile this one it would get 4 armor choosing the materials for certain items like for example rings may be done based on the traits more than any other information on the ring same goes for adornments where you want the traits in this situation for example if you made a bracelet out of this thing it would give you might and reach Here you would get lucky three. Here you would get might two and the reach two. Here you would just get might. In this situation, because of the demerald, you can get kitty vision. Certain material that the mod adds have low drop rates like for example the fine silk better droplets rates like sinew and some are crafted materials like for example fine silk cloth which is made by crafting together force fine silk based on the items you can make with the things with the materials you can get a material which is able to make the same things for example a sinew mixed fabric was made from fine silk not fine silk flax right and sinew sinew is giving it range damage 20% Meanwhile, flax gives it ranged speed. With one single flax and three sinews, we can get 20% speed and also 16% damage. In your particular pack, you may have various other alloys which have stats added for them like for example in this case indirium is a tier 4 material added by all the ores usually it's added by thermal expansion and this one has the trait malleable some have very interesting traits like for example lumium which has refractive places phantom lights as long as it's a tool and its material ratio is at least 50% or a tool rod with same condition being a tool and material percentage 50%. It also gives you range damage times 1.1, harvest speed 1.2 times, and a huge increase in rarity. If by any chance there are items or materials you cannot use for your existing mod pack and you would like them to be used, there is a tutorial on how to make these available and add numbers as well as traits to these items and your mod pack creator might actually do that if you ask them very nicely
once you are a little bit more towards the end game, you can also make a Starlight Charger. The Starlight Charger is a late game material enhancer made with blaze gold, block of quartz, a bunch of glass, some polished black stone, and this particular setup. The blocks on top of these pillars are the only thing that matters. So you could just use any type of material for the base and for the pillars, as long as you have the correct heads. The heads can be used, the heads that can be used are crimson steel, Azure Electrum and Tyrael Steel for tiers 1, 2 and 3. Based on the tier of the altar, you can use the appropriate dust early on You can use blaze gold, later as your silver, and very late game, you can use star metal dust. Star metal dust is quite expensive, although it does have a huge benefit. In order to get your head around what kind of benefit, this Tyrian steel alloy ingot, which has not been graded, has 3,396 durability. Meanwhile, its star charged max grading counterpart has 8,622. In terms of harvest level, this one has five, this one has six. Harvest speed, 18, this one is 37. Attack damage, 13 here. Meanwhile, the normal one has 7.7. .7. Range damage, 389 times. This one is 6.55 times. Armor is also really huge, 25.92. Meanwhile, this one has 39.7. In total, the armor toughness is 17.3, and while here you have only 12, and the list can go on forever. Used as a tool rod, this one increases your range damage by 1.19, and the harvest speed is increased by 1.24 times, but reduced by 1.63. In its star charged version, it's no longer reduced, but increased by 12.36. And also the damage is increased to three times the standard range damage. You can have better or worse materials and it would be best for you to just look up all the ingots in your pack and check what you can or cannot make and check all the traits and look up what would suit you the best. Some materials can only be used for certain things. Say, for example, this particular Lumium alloy should be mostly used for its refractive as a tool rod. Some can be exclusively used for one thing, one thing and one thing alone. 
like for example this netherite alloy ingot made with three netherite ingots and one blaze gold which gives you fireproof brilliant and a bunch of increased stats multipliers 1.44 times so almost 50 percent increase into the damage and range damage is nothing to sneeze at also if you make a coating out of this it will raise whatever tool you have to a harvest level of five it will increase its durability by 1.3 times so 30 percent and another five it fits a an armor it will increase its durability by 11 percent it will increase the enchantment value by seven but it can only be used as a coating there are coatings that add a certain thing like for example swim speed in in the aquatic version where you get water breathing and deal more damage to aquatic mobs like for example fish or guardians it gives you a bunch of armor toughness knockback resistance durability and armor durability as well when used as an adornment this particular item can give you just swim speed increase keep in mind that aquatic and swift swim do seems to, to stack with each other given the knowledge you have i will leave you guys with a look at sword the machete i made in this particular situation i went for a magnetic because i really wanted the items to come to me lucky this one gives me a bunch of luck synergistic which is really useful if you have a certain material that is more than 100 percent synergy ancient so that i can get a little bit more experience as i said in the beginning these items can be enchanted unlike their thinkers construct counterparts the enchantments you can put over here are getting the ridiculous items even more ridiculous and even more overpowered in this particular setup i chose to have azure silver bracelets adorned with quartz hybrid gem lapis lazuli hybrid gem demerald and prismarine the demerald gives me night vision in this particular situation it's called key division sweet swim is given by the prismarine along with greedy which gives me a bunch of mining speed when mining ores lucky three which gives me a little bit of fortune reach which gives me a bunch of block reach moonwalker which gives me minus 60 percent to gravity and the rest namely malleable do not count as you may see it's pretty useful because we can get very high jumps tools which do get a little bit of durability loss even though it might actually be really difficult with this 
particular type of items can be repaired using a repair kit. You can fill the repair kit with the tier of material you want to repair with, as in like, for example, all of this stuff is made with tier four, which means it can only be repaired with tier four and above. So we could not get any movement out of this, but we will also not get any use on this particular item. Meanwhile, a tier 4 metal can be used to repair things, even if it's not the same exact material. Namely, we are going to repair using Enderium, our Ethereum steel alloy ingot bow. We can also repair the arrow with a tiny amount of Enderium to get more arrows out of it, as in like ammo percentage, it's still durability. You're probably getting this vibes from 1.12 versions of Tinker's Construct. I think it has a lot of that vibe. In this particular situation, we can get water breathing, night vision, haste, fire resistance because of using all the items and when we do get into the water we get a few more things like for example swim speed and other important traits if you guys think that this has been a very useful tutorial please like share and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what other mod i should make a cover out of thank you guys for watching buffer fish out